Good morning. I am so glad to get to see you guys this morning. This is kind of our transition week, and so some of you guys are sitting at home in your living room in your pajamas, and you're you're watching uh, this morning. And some of you, maybe you're in the car or you're going off somewhere down the road, and you're watching this in the back seat of the car. And then we've even got some people who are here at the church this morning on Sunday, May the tenth. Uh, we finally got to come back together for some of us to, to be able to get out and to join one another here this morning. So this is just a great week, and I tell you what I want you to do. If you're in the service this morning, uh, I'm sitting up at the piano right now, if you're here, and so I want you to just look up and look up at me and wave. Okay, did I wave back? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so that means that we're all in the room together, those of us that are here, and you guys have got your, your electronic device and your earbuds or your headphones in and you're listening, and so it is just so good for us to finally be able to start coming back together, and I'm really glad that I got to see everybody this morning. Before we get started, um, I do want to recognize what this morning is all about, what this day is all about, and I want to say thank you to every one of our moms in our church. Probably more than anybody else uh, in our congregation, more than anybody else associated with our church, I see the fruit of your labor. And I see the results of the hard work that you put in uh, with your kids. And i got to tell you, I am so impressed uh, with every one of the children that we have associated with our church. And I just want to tell you all, thank you, each and every one of you, because you are not raising great kids. You're raising great adults. And they are getting the foundation and all of the building blocks and the principles that they need to know so that 80 years from now, they are still doing all of the things that they need to be doing and just being great human beings. And they couldn't do that without you. So I just want to tell you all, thank you so very much this morning. And I hope today is a blessed day for you um, and that you just uh, really enjoy and like we said last week, Mother's Day is not a holiday of grace. It is a holiday of thanksgiving. And I just want to give you guys thanks uh, this morning. Give the Lord thanks for each one of you and all the hard work that you put in with our kids. So uh, before we get started this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to pick up at the end of Acts 15, the beginning of Acts 16, uh, right where we left off last week. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for letting us be here and for watching over us and uh, all of the kids and we just thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe through everything that's been going on around us uh, with the diseases and, and everything and we just are so thankful to get to be back together this morning and we just ask Father that you please continue to, to watch over us and use us in a mighty way. Lord as everything begins to open back up, uh, please just help us to be kind and loving and we just pray that this lesson this morning will be beneficial in that in getting our hearts prepared for the week to come and for being able to go back out and to interact with people once again. We thank you and we praise you for this morning and everything that you've done for us today Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, so we are we, we ended up last week uh, right toward the end of Acts chapter 15. Paul and Barnabas have gone uh, down to Jerusalem and they've had this big discussion about whether people should be keeping all of these extra rules when they become a Christian or whether we're a Christian just because of what Jesus has already done for us. We settled all of those things out and everything went toward what Paul and Barnabas had been teaching, that we are Christians, that we are saved, that we it is by Christ's work alone, and that there's no extra rules that we follow in order to be saved, that there's no extra work that we do to make ourselves better so that we can be saved. It's all by what Jesus has done, and we simply trust Him that He did it, that He did it for us, that we needed it. And when we do that and we, we pray and we acknowledge those things, then Jesus comes into our heart and we are saved by His work and everything that He's done. So they come out of this discussion and the apostles and the leaders, they, they write all of the, the letters uh, to people that say, listen to what Paul and Barnabas are saying. We agree with them. This is what it's supposed to be. And just in case you think this might be made up, we're sending some other guys uh, to come down and to say, yes, we support what these guys are saying. And those two gentlemen that went down with Paul and Barnabas that went back down to Antioch, their names are Silas and Judas. Not the Judas that we know about in the Bible that betrayed Jesus. This is a different guy named Judas. 
So they go back down to Antioch and they say, yes, these letters are true. Yes, Paul and Barnabas were right in what they were teaching. And we're here to say, to testify and say, yes, this is what it's supposed to be. So now Paul and Barnabas, everything has gone really well for them. And they get back down to Antioch and they're sitting there and they're teaching and everything's going really well. They, they get all of this, these uh, lessons fixed the way they're supposed to be and they get all of the people thinking in the right direction there in that church. And Paul says to Barnabas one day, you know what? We need to go out. We don't need to just stay in Antioch with this. This confusion and this bad teaching has gone everywhere that we went before. We need to go back around and we need to remind people that it's all about what Jesus does. So let's go back and visit all of these other cities. And Barnabas agrees. He says, I agree. We should go back and, and go to Lystra and Iconium and Derbe and all these places again. And But we don't need to go just us. We need to take some other people. Paul says, I agree. Let's take some other people. And Barnabas says, I think we should take John Mark again. Now, why would that be a problem? Now, think really hard. What did Mark, what did John Mark do the last time he went with Paul and Barnabas? They left. Uh, Antioch, they went over to the island of Cyprus, and while they were over there, something happened. Do you remember what it was? John Mark did something. He left them. They were continuing on. He got homesick. He didn't like what he was hearing, and he abandoned them and went back to Jerusalem. So when Barnabas says, I think we should take John Mark again, Paul says, absolutely not. There's no way that this guy is going. He's already left us once before. He'll do it again. He's not fit for this ministry. He's not fit to go on the road with us. And Barnabas says, maybe not. Maybe he isn't. But he's getting there, and I think we should be patient with him. I think we should be loving with him, and we should give him another shot. And so these guys are going back and forth with this argument, and it never gets fixed. They finally decide that these guys who have been together for over 15 years, working together in ministry side by side, they decide that they should just not be together anymore. That Paul should go in this direction and Barnabas should go in this direction because they just cannot come to an agreement over this issue with John Mark. Now this raises a really important question. In fact, this could cause a lot of confusion to somebody who read this and thought, now wait a minute, why would God, who is love, why would God, the Holy Spirit, not step in and show these guys who, they're, they're like prophets, the, the Holy Spirit has revealed to them all of these truths and all of these teachings and all given them direction, go here, go there. Why wouldn't the Holy Spirit step in and say, this is the right answer, Either Mark should go or Mark should not go. This is what it should be. Now you guys make up and go on about your business and this is what you should do. Why would God allow Paul and Barnabas to split apart? Why wouldn't he step in and say, I want you to do it like this? Well, that's an important question because there's a lot of things that we deal with in our Christian life that isn't covered exactly in the Bible. So there's things that, that, you know, I can't pick up my Bible and flip through and say, let's see, let me think. If I have two kids who are sitting in children's church one morning and they just keep talking and they're getting louder and louder and everybody's having a hard time hearing me, I can't turn to somewhere in Scripture that says, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says that you should separate these kids this far apart and put one at this table and one at that table. No. It doesn't say anything like that. There's nothing in the Bible where I can turn to a certain page and say, if somebody in children's church, if I'm up and I'm doing some sort of a skit or I'm acting something out, and it actually scares one of the kids or they get upset because of something we're teaching and they start to cry, there's nowhere in the Bible that I can turn to that says, this is exactly what you should say to that child to help them to calm down and to feel better about what's going on. 
There's nowhere in here that tells me if we're sitting in class and say two brothers or two sisters start to get into a little bit of an argument with one another, what I should do, how I should step in and fix that. All sorts of problems come up and we don't have anywhere in the Bible that we can turn to and it tells us exactly what we're supposed to do. Instead, God gives us principles. Not principles like the person who's in charge at your school. It's a different principle. It's spelled a different way. If I had my whiteboard up here, I would show you how the different spellings go. But a principle is an idea that you apply to many different situations so you know what you're supposed to do. A principle like, we should always be kind to one another. All right, That's a principle. Now what does that look like? Well, it looks differently if you're dealing with your brother or your sister at home. Then it does say if you're dealing with an elderly person that you see at the grocery store who comes up and speaks to you, right? You're being kind in both cases. Somebody at the grocery store comes up and it's maybe your mama's friend or your mom's friend and they speak to you. Are we supposed to hide behind our mom? No, that's not being very kind. That's being rude. We're supposed to speak back to the person even if they're big or they're older or, you know, we don't really want to talk, but we still want to be kind. And so we speak to them and we say hello and we have a nice conversation with them. That looks differently than if we're in our room and we're playing with toys and our brother or sister comes in and they want us to share. But both of them follow the same principle. Be kind. So God gives us principles to help us make decisions in different situations. And so when we come to a situation like this where you've got Paul and Barnabas, they each are really focused on a different principle. Barnabas is focused on the principle that we should always be patient and loving with young believers, with people who are not just people who are young in age, but people who are new into being Christians, and that we should be patient with them and encouraging to them. Remember that he was called the son of encouragement. And so that's what his principle is, is that I should continue to work with this young man and I should continue to counsel him and mentor him and help him to grow. And Paul's principle is we have got to be consistent. We have got to be strong in the faith. In everything that we do, we can't go back and forth and decide whether we want to do something today and not do it tomorrow, that we've got to be strong and consistent every single day. Now, is Paul's principle right? Yes. Is Barnabas' principle right? Yes. So sometimes, even though it's very hard, we get into some of these situations where God says, you're both right, but you can't both right be right together. Let me say that again. Where God says, you're both right, but you can't both be right together. And so God even allows sometimes situations like this where we go in opposite directions about something. So much so that we even end up splitting things up sometimes. Where one person says, okay, I'm going to take my principle and I'm going to go over here and live by this. And another person says, I'm going to take my principle and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to live by this. Now, does that mean that these two people hate each other or they don't love each other? No, it doesn't. Does this mean that these two people can't talk to one another? Nope, it doesn't mean that. It just means that different people have different strengths, different things that they really focus on. And it's important that we have this, if the word is diversity, it's important that we have a lot of different strengths going on at the same time. Do you guys think, now I want you to think for a minute, what is it, that we the church are called. We're called the blank of Christ. Do you guys know what that blank is? The church is called the blank of Christ. Maybe you said the bride of Christ, and that's true. We're, but mainly we're called the body of Christ. And in fact, Paul, over when he's writing to the Corinthians, he even describes the different parts of the body. And he says, the eye can't say to the ear, I have no need of you, because yeah, my eye does need my ear. Right? If I'm walking along 
And sometimes things will be going on behind me that I can hear, but I can't see. So if I'm at a baseball game, and I'm walking along, and somebody hits a foul ball from behind me, and I can't see it, but at least I can hear someone say, Heads up! And I can turn and look, and now my eye used my ear to know something was getting ready to happen, and that it needed to look around. And so different, that, that's true of all of our body. My ear needs my feet. Because if my ear doesn't have my feet, all the things that it hears coming and going, it's not going to be able to do anything with that. It needs my feet to take me someplace. So God in all of His wisdom made us so that we are not all the same. We have different hearts. We have different emotions. We have different strengths. We have different weaknesses. And that's why it's so important, even uh, in our families and in our ministries, that we look to each other to kind of kind of be like fingers like this, where we, we bond in and, and my strengths help somebody else's weaknesses and their strengths help my weaknesses. That's why Miss Katrina and I, we do children's ministry together because there's things that Miss Katrina is really good at that I am so terrible at. And there are things that I'm really good at that she is so terrible at. And it's not just in our children's ministry, but even in our family with our own kids. There are places where I am just not good at something. And Miss Katrina can come in, and it's especially uh, like with us, there are times when uh, I do not want to listen. When my kids are trying to tell me something or they're trying to, to share something with me and I've already made my mind up and I don't want to listen. And they know I don't want to listen and so they don't come and talk to me. But they will go and talk to Miss Katrina because she's always listening. She wants to know what they think about things. And so they tell her things that they would never tell me in a million years. Because that's not where my strength is at. I'm not always, I'm very seldom a good listener. But Miss Katrina is a great listener. And then there are some times when I, my strength comes in and, and I am a doer. And so when it is time for a decision to be made or it's time for something to be done, then Miss Katrina kind of steps out of the way and says, what do we need to do right here? And I come in and I look at the problem and I figure out how it is that we're supposed to fix that. And it even carries over into the ministry that we do together. So our strengths come beside each other and they work out very well. Now every once in a while... Just like with Paul and Barnabas, somebody's strengths kind of run into each other. And so instead of doing this where we're bonding together very well, we end up doing something like this where we start butting heads. And a lot of times when we get into a situation like that, the best thing that we can do... Now these guys took this to an extreme. They left each other and went in completely opposite directions. That's not always a very good idea. But it is a good idea for us to maybe take five minutes and go off in a different direction and think about this or maybe take an hour or take some amount of time and go off and think about what the other person is saying and think about the other person's strengths and our weaknesses and say, okay, is there some way that we can work this out? Is there something that I'm not seeing because all I'm focusing on is my strength and not my weakness? Is there something I'm not seeing because all I'm focusing on is their weakness and not their strength? And you know who helps us do those things? Satan. The devil and our flesh and sin helps me to look at all of my positives and how right I am and the other person's negatives and how wrong they must be. And so what I have to end up doing 
And this is what Paul and Barnabas did. And I think it took them a little while to do this. But I'm pretty confident that they ended up doing it based on some things that we read elsewhere. They got apart from each other. They went in separate directions. And Paul began to think about all the strengths that Barnabas had. And Par Barnabas began to think about all the strengths that Paul had. And they began to see things that they had each missed previously. And after they'd had some time apart, we know that Paul didn't abandon Barnabas in this because when he was writing to the Corinthians, remember I said earlier he talked about the Corinthians, that when he was writing to them he talked about the, the church being the body of Christ. Well, he also says when he's writing to the Corinthians in chapter 9, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, he talks about Barnabas again being strong in the ministry. He uses Barnabas as an example. And this was years later, even after Paul, after him and Barnabas had gone their separate ways and had been apart from each other for a long time. And then later on, when Paul is writing a letter to Timothy, he says to Timothy, I need you to bring John Mark to me. He's very important to me right now. I need him for a lot of things right now. He is very profitable. He's very useful to me. So years later, after they had separated and they had time to think about these things, we see Paul understanding and seeing the strengths that Barnabas had and that John had. And we know that, that John, Mark, and Barnabas appreciated the strengths that Paul had for his entire ministry. So it was a blessing to, for them after they got apart from one another for a little while to be able to see what the other one, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses that they had. And sometimes it's good for us to be able to do that. It's good for us to be able to do that with our friends, with our brothers and sisters, uh, moms and dads. It's good for them to be able to get apart and when they get away from each other, now this is important, when we get away from each other and we stop listening to the devil, we stop listening to Satan tell us how right we are and how wrong they are. And we start praying and we start asking God to please help us see what the other person is strong at. And please help us see what our weaknesses are. That we begin to see that it's got to be like this. That we're supposed to come together like a body rather than poking strength on strength that we go strength to weakness, that we go strong to weak, and we come together like this, and we become so strong that nothing can break us apart. It takes time for that to happen, and it's very interesting that God, many times throughout history, and even within our own church, God has allowed people to kind of separate, to come apart from one another for a little while, to see the benefit and the strength of one another so that we can come back together and be strong. It happens in families. It happens in ministry. It happens in our classes and with our friends. It even happens in our jobs. Everywhere around, we just sometimes, God says, I need you two to just kind of get away from each other for a little bit so that you come back together and appreciate one another the way that you need to so that you're stronger afterwards than you were before. And that's what happened here with Paul and Barnabas. And that's kind of a, that's an important thing to remember, especially on Mother's Day. Because mothers are very much, Barnabas was very much like a mother in the way that he was always encouraging and kind and loving and merciful to all of those around him. He, he always was looking for growth and to get uh, to, to help people to get stronger and to be more confident in everything that they were doing. And he did not give up on anybody. He didn't give up on Paul when he was Saul and nobody wanted to be around him. He didn't give up on the, any of the believers at Jerusalem. He didn't give up on John Mark. He never gave up on any of these folks. And so when we look at that and we, we think about that, I think today's a good day and it just timed out that way and I appreciate the Lord doing that, that it timed out that way for us to be able to, to
to look at this on Mother's Day and to look at how Barnabas was kind and merciful and loving to John Mark when Paul was, and Paul was right. John Mark was not ready to go back. He was absolutely right in what he said. John Mark was not ready to go out on another missionary journey. And Paul said, i got to have someone who is strong, who is with me. And so Paul chose Silas, and they go off in the direction they went. And Barnabas said, I know he's not ready, and that's why I'm going to keep him with me. So two strengths, two principles that just kind of butted up against each other. But after they had some time apart, rather than doing like this, they kind of slipped in there and they worked with each other again. We don't have any, we don't have any evidence that these two men ever worked together again in the ministry. But they still appreciate each other, they still loved each other, and they came back together like this again. So I think this is a good week for us to be thinking on that. So now we're going to a new chapter with Paul and with Silas, and this is where we're going to pick up. We're going to meet a new guy next week named Timothy, and we're going to see everything that happens with, with uh, Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke, who's now traveling with these guys. Luke is getting ready to join them as well. And so we're going to see this band of four guys who are going out and doing a lot of things, and that's where we're going to pick up next week. So I hope you guys have a great Mother's Day. Hopefully Jordan's about getting finished up this morning. If not, just make sure you guys stay right there where you're at in your seat. Sit quietly. Uh, you guys at home, you all can go on and do whatever you need to, but if Jordan's not quite finished up yet uh, in our church service, I want you guys to just sit quietly and uh, stay there with your, your earbuds in or your headphones on. And I'm, well, let's practice being still and quiet. Just like we do when we get into our prayer circle, okay? Being still and quiet while Jordan finishes up this morning. All right? You guys that aren't with us, I love you all. Can't wait to see you again. Those of you that are still here, I'm so glad you got to be here this morning. So I'm going to close us in prayer. We're going to be still and quiet to finish out the service this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day and letting us be here. Thank you for just watching over us and protecting us. And we thank you, Lord, that no two of us are the same. That we all have different strengths and different weaknesses. And we just praise you and thank you so much for the way you bring us together as one body where we can grow and build upon one another and help each other and lift each other up. And I just pray that you would help each one of us as we are growing and maturing and getting older, that we will come together as a body, even within our children's church. And when these kids get into the middle school class and the youth and right on up, and that we'll just continue to grow together. And as we send them out into different places and they grow up and they start going here and there and their families and everything else, that you'll just continue to use them and they will be so strong for you no matter what ministry or church you put them in. And we thank you and we praise you for every one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.